You know there's sometimes that I get angry. But the Bible says don't get angry. And I need to literally practice handing these things over to God. Anything you need to hand over to God today? Thank you, Pastor Sumdi. Good morning, everybody. We love your pastor. We've hosted him in Melbourne at our church. Come on, why don't you thank the team today for their great generosity to us? When we sing about the resurrected King, we are united in spirit together. Amen. We sang that at our church this morning, back in Melbourne, and when we started to sing together, I felt united in the Spirit of God between us. Come on, once more, why don't we give praise to our loving God, the resurrected King. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, our God. I asked our church today to pray for me and for us as we meet together. And I already sense God at work, His presence moving amongst us. And I believe he wants us to pray bold prayers. I want to encourage you if you're believing for something today. If you are believing for a breakthrough. That as we join with God and His Spirit, the Bible tells us that all things are possible through Him who believes. Amen. Amen. So it is a privilege for me to be with you today. If you have your Bible, turn with me to Matthew chapter 7, please. Matthew chapter 7. This is the spiritual service. You've slept in a little bit. You've had your coffee. Now you're ready to go. Today we're going to talk about the foundation of your life. Because in Matthew chapter 7, up to this point, Jesus has been teaching in Matthew 5 and 6 the most powerful sermon that has ever been preached. He has been teaching about the Sermon on the Mount. And whenever Jesus preached, lives were transformed. Jesus gave information that led to revelation, that led to transformation. And when Jesus speaks to us, it impacts our lives. And you can read Matthew 5 and 6 this afternoon. You can take some time and hear what it is that God would be speaking to you about. Then in Matthew chapter 7, Jesus is teaching at the end of the Sermon on the Mount. And in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to 27, if you have your Bible or whatever other device you use, this is what it says. Therefore, everyone 
who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose and the winds blew and they beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came, the streams rose and the winds blew and they beat against that house and it fell with a great crash. ហើយព្រះបត្តាមអ្នកនោះព្រះបានទៅនឹងមនុស្សឆ្លៀសវិញម្នាក់ដែលបានសង់ផ្ទះរបស់ខ្លួនLet's pray. Loving God, I pray you would bless your word today. Let us have ears to hear. Minds that are alert. And a heart that is open to the things that you want to say to us and challenge us about today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There are some important words in these verses. Because as Jesus taught, there was a crowd around him. The first word is the word hear. When Jesus said, hear these words of mine, he wasn't talking as if a husband and a wife are talking where the husband does not listen. Or when a parent talks to their child and the child does not listen. Jesus says, when you hear, listen intently as if your life depends upon it. Hear, hear these words of mine, Jesus said. Another important word in this is a wise man. A wise man is somebody who is smart. Another important word is foolish. A foolish man is somebody who is not very smart. And the end of the passage, when it fell with a great crash, that means a very, very big crash. Because Jesus had been teaching those that were around him and literally thousands of people were listening to the words of Jesus. But Jesus didn't want to just give information. He wanted to give revelation that leads to transformation. Because there is a lot of information that is available to us. We have a term in Australia and we call it useless information or information that is not important. There is a lot of information available to us. And 
The mission statement of Google is to give people information. You can literally find anything on Google. And information continues to grow rapidly. When Jesus started to teach, since Jesus was teaching, information has grown and grown rapidly. But we have an information and action gap. There is a gap that exists between the things that we know and the things that we do. I know that when I drive too fast on the road in Australia, a policeman is going to come after me and he's going to give me a ticket. I know that for me to be healthy, I need to eat lots of vegetables and I need to exercise regularly. But there are many things that taste so good. And sometimes sitting on my couch is so comfortable. Because I have an information gap. I have the information to know what is right, but I don't always do what it says. And in this passage of Scripture, Jesus tells us that if we are to be wise, we would practice the things that he tells us. I am so glad that people practice. I'm glad the musicians today have practiced uh, and learnt how to play their instruments. Means we can come together and we can lift up God's name. I'm glad that the plane that I got on to come here to your beautiful country, I'm glad the pilot has practiced how to fly the plane. And the principle is the same for us. Jesus is encouraging us to practice the things he said. And so Jesus is talking to a crowd of people in this passage of scripture. And the people know what it's like to build a house. To add an extra room onto their house. Because families in that time all lived together on the same land. You would have multi-generation, grandparents, children, and children's children. When they would get married, they would simply add another room or another dwelling on their house so the family could stay together. And so all of the people that are listening know this story. They can understand the story that Jesus was saying. And when Jesus spoke about what a house represents and what a house looks like. He's speaking about your life. He's speaking about your relationships and your job. And the illustration for us is the house represents all of our life. And 
And Jesus is telling us to practice the things he says to build on the right foundation. So Jesus is talking about two people that were building a house. They had both heard the same words that Jesus had spoken about. And so they both built a house and their houses looked exactly the same. And the same storm came to them. The same rains came. Same streams rose. The same stream. Uh, the winds blew. Okay. But yet one house stood. One house, one house, house stayed secure, and the other one fell over with a great crash. And the difference was practicing the things that Jesus has told us about. So the challenge for us is to continue to practice all that Jesus has taught us. Those things that we find in Scripture and in His Word. Scripture that has not changed in 2,000 years and is still relevant to us today. That we would allow His Word to continue to mould us and shape us, lead us, guide us. Because all of us at some point will face a storm. We experience storms in life. You might experience a financial storm. A health storm. Some kind of storm in your family. Jesus doesn't say we won't experience those storms. But he says when your foundation is on him, you can withstand that storm. That your house and your life will be strong in him. Scripture reminds us that he is our firm foundation. He's the cornerstone of your life. And as we put our trust in Him, He will look after us. As, amen. As we practice the things that Jesus taught us. There is a building in Europe. It is called the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Many years ago, they built this building. Has anybody ever seen this building before? Okay. The Leaning Tower of Pisa. It was built for a purpose. But when they built this building, the foundation was not strong. It was not built on rock. It was built on soft sand. And this picture shows us what happens to our lives when we are not built on the rock of Jesus. This is now a tourist attraction. People now come and have a look at this building. They take photos next to the building. 
and they pretend to hold the building up so it doesn't fall over. And if your life is not built on Jesus, it is just like this building that one day might topple over. And that's why when Jesus said, hear these words of mine, we need to listen intently so that as if our life depends upon it. That everything within our lives would be built around that which Jesus has taught us and shown us. And when Jesus teaches us about practicing wisdom, he gives us three thoughts. How our wisdom is built. First of all, our wisdom is built through Scripture and allowing the Spirit of God to speak to us. Wisdom comes from His Word. Hearing, listening, receiving. That we would allow God's word to mould us and shape us and lead us. James chapter 1 verse 23, uh, 22 says, Do not merely listen to the word so that we would deceive ourselves. Do what it says. Verse 23 says, Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is somebody who looks at their face in the mirror and after looking at it goes away and immediately forgets what they look like. <laughs> When we go to the mirror, when I went to the mirror to get ready this morning, I combed my hair, I washed my face, because I want to look good for you today. I hope you did the same. The same thing when I go to God's word. I want God to speak to me through his word. So that I can practice the things that it says so I can uh, be his child. Because there are some times that I get anxious. But Philippians chapter 4 says, don't be anxious for anything. Give thanks to God. And by prayer and petition, present your request to God. And verse 7 says, let the peace of God that transcends understanding guard your heart and your mind. Who needs to practice that? Amen. You know, there's sometimes that I get angry. But the Bible says don't get angry. And I need to literally practice handing these things over to God. Anything you need to hand over to God today? As we practice the things that he says. God didn't leave us, he's right here with us. Jesus gave us his word so that we could follow after him. And 
And as we continue to practice the things that the Bible says, we allow the Holy Spirit to come and lead us and guide us. To allow His Word to mold us and shape us and lead us. The second thing that wisdom is growing is in community. Do you know that Jesus lived in community? He had 12 disciples. He had 12 other bloke, other men around him. He needed the Spirit of God, 12 men. And he models to us what it's like to live together in community. Coming together to fellowship. To sing together, to pray together. And we get to encourage one another when we meet together. There are some times when I need encouragement. And it's when I come together in community, when I come together with my church family. Sometimes it's hearing people pray. Sometimes it's hearing people sing of the resurrected King. Sometimes it's having a coffee with you outside. For the men, it could be going on men's camp. For the men, when we are together, we encourage each other, we build each other up. When we meet in our small group, we pray together. I need you and you need me. You've got a family in Melbourne. Our church family is part of your church family. And we get the chance to think of you and pray for you and encourage you. The third way that wisdom is built is through our trials, through our challenges. There are times when I feel like I'm living on the mountaintop. I love the mountain top. Everything oh, goes well for me. I'm singing, I'm dancing, I'm oh, praising. But you know, the Bible also talks about some valley experience. Psalm 23 talks about going through the valley of the shadow of death. And I get to experience a different part of God's love for me when I'm in the valley. When I'm going through challenges, you know the truth is I tend to trust God more. I tend to pray more. I spent the last 10 years working in the marketplace. There were days when I didn't have the answers. And I would find myself going on the train to work, praying in my heavenly language. Asking God, would you speak to me? Would you lead me? 
And I found that God would give me a word. He would encourage me. He would lead me throughout that day. Hay long pe nu nyom chap dao me aram tha pong aoi preh ban tu ma pe ma kan nyom lek tuk chet nyom chum roi nyom to dam nai tham muk. I found it was in those challenges that I sensed God's presence the most. Ku nyom chap dao me aram tha ku nu nong tuk lom ba tiang ao nu dai nyom chap dao me aram pi pa ang tham thiet. I don't think he had changed. But something changes in me. Nhom ot kat tha bang phlas prae te pan tae chivit nhom chap dam phlas prae ruh neu srop tam bang. And look at James promises us that when we draw near to God, he draws near to us. Nu khong Jacob chom puk ti bo han man chai an ope yeng chou kie te kan bang prae ang ko chou kie ma kan chivit bo yeng dai. And because Jesus said that the wise and the foolish both face storms. Doi sa te pleak om pi ban chai tha bo rah dai mien phiep vei chlat bo rah dai chot lu ngong nung chuop phu Whatever that storm would look like for you in your life, could be a personal situation, financial, relational. Jesus tells us that He is close to those who are brokenhearted. And in a few minutes, well, I want to take a moment to pray for you if you find yourself in the midst of a storm. Because Jesus said that the difference between the wise and the foolish. Was practicing the things that he taught. He said the wise and the foolish face the same storms. But the wise don't face them alone. Because the wise know that he is with them. Amen. Amen. If you've never given your life to Jesus, Jesus tells us that He is the firm foundation of your life. And as you surrender your life to Him, you are making Him your firm foundation. There are many other things that represent the sand in our lives. And we look for those things in our lives, but they cannot replace the firm foundation. And today I would love the chance to pray for you. That you would give your life to Jesus. And that you would make Him your firm foundation. Can we pray together? Why don't we stand? Loving God, thank you for each person today. Particularly for those that don't yet know you. That have not surrendered their life to you. I pray that they would come now, surrender their life to you. If you've never given your life to Jesus, I'd love the chance to pray for you. For you to make him the firm foundation. Would you take a step and come so I can pray for you? Come, you come, let's pray for you. Make him your firm foundation to surrender your life to him. Come on, others. Others that he, you 
Maybe you've surrendered your life to him in the past, but you haven't been living for him. Today you want to surrender your life to him. Come on quickly, why don't you come? We're going to pray. Because the resurrected king is here today. And as you draw near to him, he draws near to you. Amen. Come on, we're gonna pray. We're gonna pray together. If you want to come, it's not too late for you. To come. Why don't you say this prayer with me at the front? Dear Heavenly Father, why don't we all pray this together? Thank you for your Son Jesus who takes away my sin. Thank you for making me your child. Amen. 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 Our team are going to come and they're going to talk to you for just a minute. Amen. Come on, let's thank God today. I feel to pray for some more people that if you're facing a storm, Whatever the storm is that you're facing, could be financial, it could be in your relationships, in your health. Would you allow us to pray for you? Would you come down the front? Let's take a moment to pray for you. I believe in praying bold prayers. I want to pray pray for breakthrough in your life that the resurrected king would come and meet you where you are go and invite the prayer team to come as well come on if you're at the front here hand that over to God Whatever that storm might look like for you, hand it over to Him. As the prayer team come and start to minister, hand that over to Him and allow God to come and meet you where you are. Father, I pray in Jesus' name. Whatever that storm would look like in our life, that you would come and you would move powerfully. I come against health issues. I come against financial storms. I pray you'd break through in relationships and families. That the resurrected king would come and move. Holy Spirit, we pray you would come and you would have your way. Let the anointing and the Spirit of God be present in any storm. And as we put our faith in you, as we practice the things that you've taught us to, to obediently follow after the things that you've said. I pray the Spirit of God would come and touch and fill We pray that in Jesus' name. Come on, let's lift our voices to Him. In thanks, in praise, we bless you, our God. 
you reign. You are over all. We give you thanks and praise today. Come on, let's give Him praise. We lift our voice to you, Jesus. ហើយខ្ញុំសង្គមថាព្រះបន្ទូលនៅថ្ងៃនេះពិតជាលើកទឹកចិត្តនឹងផ្ដល់កម្លាំងទៅដល់លោកអ្នកបងប្អូនអស